What's up, what's up you guys? In this video, I wanted to go ahead and talk about the 2023 Biden's tax plan, also dubbed as the billionaire tax plan. This tax plan is something we should discuss because it has one important aspect in it. It talks about capital gains taxes and not selling your, say, stocks, yet having still to pay a tax on capital gains. I thought that was insane. In this video, we're gonna cover the tax plan. I'll give you my thoughts on it, what's gonna happen, and if this tax plan is gonna affect you. Before I get into this video, I wanted to go ahead and thank our sponsor, Crypto.com. Here's a brief message on Crypto.com, then we'll get back to this video. I appreciate you watching through the end. Comment below as well. Reminder, hit the like button. It's the biggest favor you could do for me. And subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Guys, this video was brought to you by Crypto.com. Check out Crypto.com for all of your cryptocurrency needs. They have a blog on their website for all the news crypto related. You can buy and sell NFTs on Crypto.com. There is information about the blockchain, DeFi, and it's probably one of the best places to trade cryptocurrency. In fact, it is the fastest growing cryptocurrency app. The app I recently started using, it's super simple, easy to use. So check out crypto.com app on Android or the iPhone iOS system. And I appreciate them for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to what we were talking about. So the 2023 tax plan is called the Billionaire's Minimum Income Tax Plan. It's incredible what Biden wants to do. It's for families or net worth of individuals over 100 million. They're targeting them to have them pay a minimum of 20% in capital gains. Now, you guys may know there's two different types of incomes. There is your personal income and then there's the investment income. And to understand both, we really need to understand what's going on here. So your personal income is something that you're getting such as a W-2 or your paycheck from your job. Typically that paycheck gets deducted. You're paying social security tax, Medicare tax, payroll tax, local taxes, etc. So that has a deduction up front and that's considered your income. Now your investing taxes is also income. However, there is a risk with investments. So typically the government to encourage investing has taxed you at a lesser rate, zero to 20% in the past. The reason being is because investments are not guaranteed. You're tying up that money to give back into the economy give back into the GDP, and when you sell that investment, as it appreciates over the years, you typically pay a capital gains tax. This could be stocks, it could be pretty much anything in terms of investments. So if you pay a capital gain tax, typically it was realized on things or assets or stocks that were sold then you would pay a capital gains tax. In this new tax plan for the ultra wealthy, they are proposing that you would get tax on your estimated capital gains and you would have to pay every year a certain amount of tax. I find that to be ridiculous and they are attempting to collect a minimum of 20% on households worth $100 million in capital gains. They are also saying that up to half of the income that's generated from the billionaire's tax is going to come from individuals that have a net worth of over a billion dollars. So individuals like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, etc., they're all going to see this tax, hit their portfolios and their trusts, and it's going to be an issue. Now, some people would say, well, why does that matter to me? Or why do I care if someone worth over a hundred million dollars gets taxed? Well, today they're taxing you or them at a hundred million dollars. Tomorrow they may need more tax funding and they're going to drop that ceiling to $50 million and eventually one day to 10 million and then 5 million. And maybe if you're worth over a million dollars at one point, they're going to capital gains tax you on money you have not earned. In the constitution, there is a clear definition 
that capital gains is only taxable when an asset is traded and a person benefits from that transaction monetarily, influx of money, etc. So basically, this tax law is going to have a hard time passing this federal government uh, vote because it's in the Constitution. You can't tax someone that has not realized a potential income. This is going to hit a roadblock in the Senate or in the House, and hopefully it does not pass because eventually what I think will happen is everyone's going to get taxed on presumed capital gains or we'll need to prepay those capital gains estimates for taxes. And I think that's going to hurt investing in general. Now, they're trying to tax people more to lower their deficit in what they owe in terms of GDP and too bad. It's not going to work because the government keeps spending more money, even though they want to tax you more to knock down that deficit. They're constantly spending more money the next year and the next year and the next year, increasing the deficit in a hole. And unrealized income is one way they're going to target it. However, unrealized income has been non-taxed for years with some individuals, sometimes generations, and sometimes it has not been taxed from family to family, members of certain corporations or personal income that assume a trust, etc. So this is going to really kill a potentially big way that you could build for your family with properties, with stocks and investments that will get taxed that you cannot pass down to future generations. And I don't think that that is a great approach to having a legacy being built or having an economy that's booming because all it's going to do is going to hurt the people that are not trying to sell their assets or investments. They want to trim $1.3 trillion from the deficit with this tax plan. But again, they keep raising budgets on everything that they do that will exceed that $1.3 trillion. Congress has to move forward with this proposal, and they may not. And the last year, they did propose this unrealized capital gains tax, and it did not pass, which is great news. They're trying to do it again this year to, I think, hurt the majority of people that are trying to create, invest, and better our economy. One thing that bothers me about this tax is it doesn't just apply to normal individuals or investors. It also hurts business people that have unrealized gains as well. The problem with unrealized gains is it affects liquidity. So as an individual, if you have not sold something, but you have to pay a tax on it and you might have liquidity issues, which is cash or money in the bank, then you're going to be in trouble because you still owe that money to the government on something that they assume and something that they're estimating. And you have to fork up that money up front without selling that asset or stock. So business owners, individuals that may not be liquid rich or have a lot of liquidity on their hands can get in trouble, forcing them to potentially sell shares or sell a portion of their business to cover this unreal gains tax, which is ridiculous. On top of that, the new 2023 tax plan would raise the maximum tax for individuals to 39.6% from 37% on those earning over $450,000 in income. And that actually means a $2,600 increase for every $100,000 earned. Of course, they estimate that will raise nearly $180 billion to pay down that deficit, which sits over $2.4 trillion right now. And the biggest thing that's bothering me being in real estate and owning several real estate properties is they're trying to erase the 1031 exchange. Now, if you don't know what the 1031 exchange is, it's simply assets that you own, such as a home that has gained value within 500,000. As long as you purchase another property and live, say, in your property in the last five years for a total of two years, you could withhold not having to pay $500,000 of capital gains tax on that property. So if you owned a home for $500,000, it went up to a million, you sold that home, and within six months, you bought another home for a million dollars, you would not have to pay $500,000 in gains taxes on that sale. They're trying to do away with that. And I think that's the worst idea for anyone that's in the real estate game that's holding out on these apartments and homes and everything that they hope to pass down to their children, because ultimately they want to abolish the entire inheritance taxes, as well as the 1031 exchange taxes, and really start taxing you before you even sell anything. That's ridiculous. 
Finally, everybody's been talking about the crazy gas prices living here in California. I see that gas prices are nearing $7. They're $6.50 in certain areas, $6.80, and I've seen them as high as $5.80 in certain areas as well that are usually uh, typically within $3 a couple of years ago. So overall, gas has gone through the roof. We tax gas like crazy, especially in California. However, the Biden tax plan lowers or takes away incentives for oil drilling and oil production and fuel production because part of this Green New Deal that they're pushing. So for example, what's going to happen is if we're not incentivizing production of more oil or gas or anything like that, we're going to be hit with even higher gasoline taxes. So I don't understand why the administration has opted to not encourage more oil production or energy production where it would help Americans. What we're going to see is even higher gas prices potentially because they are taking away any incentives for any investments into the oil and fuel industry. And that's ridiculous as well. Now, Biden didn't just hurt the consumers or or the individuals that are on W-2s, et cetera, or even the wealthy. He's also proposing a 28% corporate income tax versus a 21% corporate tax. That is a big jump. And if approved, a lot of corporations are going to need to figure out how to cut costs. Well, they may cut costs with employees moving locations to friendlier tax states such as Texas, Arizona, Nevada, possibly even Florida. And we've seen that migration already. You can check out some of my videos on the California exodus, the California business exodus, and the tech exodus. And you'll see that companies have already moved including financial sectors. And if the corporate tax gets approved from 21% to 28%, we're going to see a lot more movement with companies trying to cut that cost. And that is a big 7% cost that they will need to slash somewhere, somehow, and you may be affected. Now, of course, on a modest estimate, according to taxfoundation.com, about 128,000 jobs would be cut. I think it's going to be far more than that because some companies only have a net profit of 10 or so percent. So if you're already taxing them 7% more, that's going to be an issue. So your tax to death, I mean, guys, come on, you got taxes in everything that we do. We have sales tax when you go and buy something. It's 10% here where, where I live. You have import taxes. You have gas taxes, you got bridge tolls, which is sort of a tax, you've got uh, property taxes, you've got income tax, you've got state income tax, you've got pretty much inheritance tax, capital gains tax. There's so many taxes out there that the government just really take it away money. And this is what's happening. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And in California, you could be taxed up to 52% if you're a high income earner. And to me, that is incredible. I think it's only going to go up because of mismanagement from the people that spend the money you give them that you are forced to give them. You've never entered into a partnership with the government. You've never entered into a business with someone you don't know. You may not want to start a business with someone because you would have to share a percentage, 50, 30, 25% with that individual, etc. Well, if you're sharing 52% of everything you make with a corporation or a government that you don't know what they're doing with your money, you would get frustrated. And it looks like the Biden 2023 tax plan is just taking more out of you. And it's trying to take money you have not even earned yet. And to me, that is a dangerous, dangerous slope that we're going down. And I hope it does not get approved. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate you watching it. Comment below. What do you think of this tax plan? Do you think it's getting out of hand? What do you think of taxing capital gains that have not been realized. Is it something that you thought was coming? Do you think it will be approved? And if it does, what are you going to do with all of your crypto or investments? I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit the like button. It's the biggest favor you could do for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you here in the next one.